with Fox 2. Please hit them. This is going to be good. What's up, Jet Team? Ryan here. If you haven't been here before, I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot. And I use that experience to break down epic aviation videos and stories. And someone on my Instagram asked me to break down Growling Sidewinder's video of the F-22 versus the Su-57. So I'll link to that video in the description, but we're gonna watch all five rounds and I'm gonna do some real-time debrief and I might pause the video and debrief as well. So definitely stay to the end to see who wins and some final thoughts of mine of the Su-57 versus the F-22. But before we do that, if you would, just dominate that like button for me, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, you create a mini sonic boom somewhere in the world. And that's a beautiful thing. All right, let's dive in to these five rounds of the Su-27 versus the F-22. Here we go. As between these two aircraft, we're both firing high off Boresight Fox 2s. These fights will not last long, I don't think. Um, you know, within a So right off the bat, he's talking about the weapons employment zone, weapons engagement zone. I call it the former, but at the end of the day, you wanna be outside of the WES. You wanna be far enough away or too close in to where the other aircraft can't shoot you. Now, the tricky thing, guys, is with these fifth generation fighters is they have thrust vectoring capability to where they can essentially point their nose at you and shoot either the gun or an off bore sight weapon, which just is a fancy way of saying something not right in front of you. It, you can shoot basically something to the side of you. So it's really hard to get out of the WES for these fifth generation fighters. One or two turns, it'll be over. Somebody will be dead, um, but you know we'll see how it plays out. We're gonna do five rounds and see who's gonna win the F-22 or the Su-57, so. Um, five rounds to claim victory here. Now here's the merge. One circle with a lead turn and attempt to jam the Wes here. We're a little bit too far actually here. There could be possibility of a missile launch pre-flaring uh, in anticipation of that Fox 2 shot. And so that's a nice pattern of flares coming out of that Su-57 and it's kind of covering all angles at the six o'clock. You can't see the pattern of the flares on the F-22 in this video, but just speaking of the Su-57, so that's a good design. And having some trouble with my lock. All right, so quick thought there. I know he's focused on the Fox 2 and taking that shot, but if you see the plan for him, Plan form means just like the fat part of the jet. So if a jet's pointing at you and it's straight on, you're not gonna have a big platform to shoot at. But if you see plan form, like we're seeing right now, you have this big wide tennis court is what we would call it on the F-15E that you can pump some rounds into. So for me personally, I'd be thinking guns at this moment. And my mindset would be, all right, I'm starting off with an AMRAM. So that's like a medium range missile. There's actually a switch in the F-15E that you can go through all three of these things I'm gonna tell you about. So AMRAM is forward. SRM is your short range missile that's in the middle and then aft is gun. So every time I'm in a dogfight, I'm stepping through all three of those. So as I'm going to the merge, I'm thinking AMRAM. All right, boom, fired AMRAM at this, at this unlucky pilot, uh, let them deal with it. And then, hey, if it kills them before the merge, great. Then I'm going SRM, which would be like my Fox 2, my heater. And then I'm going gun. So at this picture right here, I'm gonna have my fangs through the floor, baby. And I'm gonna be thinking, Guns. However, I understand that at this point, he's going for the Fox 2. So let's see what happens. He's going to get away with that one. He was too close anyway, really, for a Fox 2 shot. Okay, so a lot of times in fourth generation fighters, if you find yourself doing aileron rolls and things like that, uh, those are for air shows, bro. They're not for dog fights. But at the end of the day, in these fifth generation fighters, it's like a whole new mindset. It's a shift in how you're maneuvering that aircraft. And there might come a time with thrust vectoring, with doing what's called a falling leaf maneuver, which is when the jet's falling down, you can twist like this, that, hey, you might need to flip around and point your nose in the other direction. So definitely a different type of dog fighting from fourth gen to fifth gen. 
All right, here we go. He's trying to do his thrust vectoring bullshit on me here, doing actually a really nice job there. A little bit of- Okay, so that thrust vectoring BS, that's actually a falling leaf that that Su-57 is doing right there. So he's basically twisting around. He should try to pause it though. So as he's doing the falling leaf like that, he should try to pause it as he's pointing at the F-22 and then unleash a Fox 2 or potentially think of a gunshot. He might be a little bit rangy for a gunshot at this point. Over spin, I think he did too much. He might have gotten into a stall. That was weird that he just kept spinning like that. No track for him. I got one. Fox two. He should come out the other side burning. He did not. It didn't hit him. I got one more Fox two. He's got one more. And I am pre-flaring. Here we go. Fox. That's actually huge situational awareness, you know, making sure you know how many shots have come in off that enemy fighter so that you know what they might be shooting at you next. Definitely prepares you and helps you deal with whatever weapon's being shot at you. Good job. It's two from me and from him, and I hit him. Nice. Oh my God, I hit him. <laughs> awesome. And he missed me. Wow. I didn't think that would hit him. Have more confidence, man. Injection. <laughs> I see canopy, but no seat. There's no chute. His canopy came off though. This is, uh, uh, oh, I think he was still in the plane. Just real nice use of flares there by the F-22. That preemptive flare, you can see the, those flares come out a split second before that Fox Su comes off the Su-57, so well done. Yeah, and that's a bad day when you're stuck inside the jet like that. That's when you need to unstrap and push yourself out of the plane. You're not gonna go down with it like that, man. Keep fighting to the very end. <laughs> All right, F-22-1. Su-57-0. Nice fight. Let's check out round two. Here we go. Knows that, but I think if there's one aircraft out there that can take the F-22, it might be the Su-57. Um, I would agree with you that probably a good competitor, you know, would be the Su-57 as far as, you know, what would be a sporting match in a dogfight in the real world. However, when it comes to stealth characteristics, I just don't think the Su-57 can compete with the F-22, but you're talking about dogfighting, so yeah. I mean, I think it's got a shot. Just depends on the pilots. But so far, I'm off to a good start here. We got a 1-0 victory over the Su-57. Merge here again, and I've made a critical mistake. That's called a Syrian lead turn. I lead turned him way too early, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it because he was too slow. So guys, when it comes to lead turns, you can actually think about it when you're sitting in a car. So if you're sitting in a car in an intersection and the car is going past, you don't have a stop sign. Let's say you see a car kind of coming and let's say it's like 100 yards away. You've got enough acceleration that you could literally pull out like right next to it or just slightly behind it in the other lane. That's what you want to think about when you're doing a lead turn in a fighter jet is you want to arrive in a position that's somewhere between three to 6,000 feet behind that other aircraft in order to get into your weapons engagement zone. Now, what would happen if you go too early is you're gonna arrive in front of that car, right? That's what you don't want to have happen. And that's what he is saying has happened to him here. And that's why lead turning is actually a skill because you can mess it up. And if you mess it up, you end up in this situation, Fox 2 incoming, okay, no track. Fox 2 again, no track again, and tries to put guns on. Missed there too, luckily. Okay, so he claims to have done a Syrian lead term. I'm gonna disagree with him here. And the reason why is because again, we're in fifth generation fighters. Now, if these were fourth generation fighters, I think that what the picture that we saw could have been a Syrian lead turn, which means he turns in front of that aircraft. But what I just saw was the Su-57 did a great job in anticipating the F-22's lead turn. And he essentially does basically a Cobra maneuver without going up in the vertical. He does a Cobra maneuver in a different plane. So most of the times you do a Cobra maneuver, you go up and you let another jet go past you. But you can also do it what's called a Cobra maneuver in a different plane. So if you take that same motion, you turn it sideways, and you do that, it basically kills all of your energy and lets that jet turn in front of you. Because again, the pilot's thinking that you're gonna continue to fly straight and do a merge of your own. But if you essentially stop your jet in space, like that F-22 
or sorry, like that SU57 did, it's gonna look like a Syrian lead turn. But for Growling Sidewinder, I don't think you should be as hard on yourself. I think that was just great fifth generation piloting by the SU57 to anticipate what the F-22 was gonna do. I don't know if he was too slow to capitalize on it. I think it was just a surprise. It was kind of a shock. <laughs> I think the Su-57 was like, oh, well, that actually, that worked really well. And now I'm right here, potentially in a WES, definitely in some sort of a radar missile WES, maybe slightly unable to employ that Fox 2. But yeah, I think it probably surprised the Su-57. <laughs> Okay, something I like there from the Su-57 is actually taking that high angle gunshot. You'll hear me talk about this throughout dogfights, and that is you can do things that maybe aren't textbook that might make the other pilot slip up. We'll talk about that more in a little bit, but seeing a gunshot, even if it's high angle, it's gonna distract you as the pilot who's getting shot at. So I think that's actually a, a decent tactic by the Su-57. I've made some pretty aggressive mistakes uh, right off the bat in the beginning of the merge with this fight, so I don't have really good feelings about it. Here we go, I can maybe get a lock here. Still no lock, he almost shot me with guns. So again, the Su-57 is being aggressive with the guns. He's taking high angle shots. And ultimately in a dogfight, you might only have five or six seconds at the very beginning of a dogfight, especially with a fifth gen fighter, to kill the other aircraft. So. Like in Top Gun Maverick, when he shoots a Su-57 with the F-14. Not a traditional thing to do, right? But that might be your only shot at it. You might have one shot to take the other jet out. I just cannot get a lock on him. Turn around and face him. I might have to go guns with him. Do it, man. He's getting way too close with those guns every time. Don't be afraid. Use the guns, He's man. turning into the sun. That's going to be a serious problem for my Fox 2 here. Okay guys, so FOX2 has essentially a priority. It goes for the hottest object. Now, in this situation right now, the hottest object is the sun, for sure. The second hottest object would be afterburner from that Su-57. The third hottest object is gonna be flares. So the big thing you wanna do as a pilot is you, you want the other aircraft to be shooting into the sun with their Fox 2s. If you can't do that, then you wanna be out of afterburner so that your flares don't get completely ignored and the Fox 2 goes towards your afterburner. So you wanna be in what's called mill power, military power. It's the highest setting prior to max, which is afterburner. You wanna be sitting there when a Fox 2 comes off. So if you're looking behind you, Fox 2 comes out, I'm out of afterburner, I'm right into military power, and then I'm continuing the dogfight. And then as soon as that Fox 2 misses, and I'm flaring as well to get it to grab onto those flares, I go back into max to get more energy and then kind of go through that same cycle again in your mind as you're dogfighting. That'll help. I have a lock. Fox 2 missed. Oh, failure. oh no. So that was kind of foreshadowing, right? We saw the Su-57 taking aggressive gunshots throughout this, which again, not textbook, but in fights like this, you're gonna to have to rewrite the textbook sometimes. So he's being aggressive with these high angle gunshots and it pays off for him. So you got something to be said for being aggressive and sometimes, you know, going against the textbook. Yeah, well played Su-57. All right, here we go, round three. All right, into the merge here for round three. One circle once again, this time we're turning the other way. I did not serially turn him that time. I'm a little bit happier with that merge. Uh, Pre-flaring, so is he. So one circle fights, guys, are essentially nose position fights where you turn and you wanna shoot the guy as fast as possible. So your goal is to get behind them really fast and shoot. A two circle fight would be where you basically turn away from each other and you do what's called a rate fight. 
So then you're just raiding around. You're kind of doing this right here, making like an eight in the sky, and you're trying to get more energy than the other aircraft. Now, with fifth generation fighters, the fact that they can turn and point their nose, it's pretty much always gonna be one circle fights, or it's gonna evolve into a nose position fights every single time, because why not? You've got the tools to turn and put your nose on the other jet, so take advantage. Get this nose to fall down on top of them, that would be real nice. Lock. Box two. And it just missed them. A little bit of over rudder. Alright, dodge that missile. I kind of over ruddered the F 22 here. Oh. Failure. ACS failure. Oh no. Okay, so everybody's a critic, right? I mean, I think uh, the F-22 pilot there, doing their best. But at the end of the day, you've got to be aggressive. Really well in this fight, though, but I think I can turn it around. I think I know what I'm doing wrong. I can turn this fight around, don't worry. If I could give one critique, I would say be more aggressive. You know, take some high angle gunshots. Don't be afraid to follow up your Fox 2s with going to guns and then taking some shots with a gun. It's just going to give you a higher probability of kill. So here we go, guys. Round four. All right. The F-22 fanboys are going to be pretty pissed with me. <laughs> I'm not putting on a good show so far. <laughs> Dude, the Su-57 is a pretty dominant aircraft, especially when you couple. What's wrong with being an F-22 fanboy? No. <laughs> I bet he's an F-22 fanboy as well. It's okay, man. It's okay to admit it. You're in a safe place. <laughs> the Archer, uh, the high off boreside Russian Fox 2, it, it can pose some very, very serious problems. Um, here we go into the next merge. This is round four. He's talking about the Archer, so the Soviet version of the AM-9. Like, yeah, it can cause some serious problems, man, but so can the AM-9X. Like, off boreside AM-9X, it's a solid missile as well. And he's already got a Fox 2 off. Whoa. Just missed me there. Lucky. More aggressive flying from the Su-57. Why is he so aggressive? <laughs> he's out for blood today. Fox 2 into the sun again. I shouldn't have done that. All right, so the critique there, like saying I shouldn't have done that, like I get it, he's kind of debriefing himself as he goes, but those are things that I would completely avoid when I was dogfighting. Essentially, if I took a bad shot, that was behind me. You're moving at 550 miles an hour, you don't have time to process those mistakes, then think about the mistakes later. But I get it, he's doing it for the video to help debrief. Nice job flaring there. Real nice for the F-22 to flare off that shot. Yeah, and then the Fox 2 getting pulled away by the sun. All right, I kind of have him defensive here. Got to be careful of his hell mounted sight, though. Fox 2 again. That looks like it's tracking. That hit him. Nice shot. Nice. And again, you can see the F-22 basically put himself in a position where the sun was behind them or wasn't a factor. So he's keeping energy above the bandit, which is huge. I love to see that because it gives you more ability to make maneuvers in the vertical because at the end of the day, guys, all dogfights are going to make them their way to the floor. That's how it's always going to wind up, especially with jets that have similar performance. So if you can preserve distance, if you can preserve altitude above the ground, that's potential energy that you can then turn into moving your nose to shoot, which was a great move by the F-22. Well played. That's what I like to see. All right, we are once again equal. That's 2-2. The next round's going to be very important. Splash 1's 257. There's a shoot. It worked for him that time. <laughs> Nice shot. Again, getting those position like that in the vertical, it's gonna be hard to defend against that. All right, guys, here we go. Fifth and final round. Let's see if the F-22 can pull it off. Fifth and final round. Whoever wins this wins the, uh, I guess, the boss fight. Uh, hands are kind of sweating here, not gonna lie. There's the merge. Once again, into the one circle, as we talked about jamming the Wes. The pre-flaring. 
his fox too. That'll miss. Roll it over on him. Okay, he said roll over on them. This is essentially a scissors, and that just means when the jets start switching positions like that. You can also get into what's called a rolling scissors, where you're rolling around each other. That's not quite this yet, but this is more of just what's called a traditional scissors, where you're just trading positions on other sides of the circle, and you're trying to get your nose, we are trying to get behind the other aircraft. So you're trying to just create distance behind the other aircraft so you can create that wedge. I am slowly working my way behind him. You can see he's getting out in front. That's what I like to see. Exactly, nice. A lock Fox 2. Oh! Did that hit him? All right, so that looked like it exploded just slightly above the tail, but guys, the things with a lot of these modern missiles is the pressurization cone that they create when they explode. Like think of a little mini bomb exploding, that pressure is gonna push down. So I would assume if that actually had exploded that close to his vertical stabilizer back there, it's gonna impact that with a pressure cone, like a shock wave essentially, and it's gonna do significant damage, maybe not from like metal shooting off the missile, but potentially, but more so from that shockwave that's gonna compress in and could do some damage to the sensitive parts of the engine on the right side of the Su-57. So I think in the real world, that Su-57, it might not impact it right away, but as he's putting G on it and moving, there's a chance that some of the structure on the back of that jet fails or the engine has a compressor stall. So we'll see what happens. Can't tell if that missile exploded above him, behind him, but it doesn't look like it hurt him too much. I got another one for him though. Fox 2, please hit him. Yes. Nice shot. There you go. All right. That's it, he's going in. So personally, I think that first missile probably disabled some maneuverability of the Su-57 that we couldn't see from this video. And then the Su-57, to me, it wasn't maneuvering extremely well. He was kind of like the sitting duck out there. And then that second Fox 2 took him out. So well played. And there's the ejection, F-22 victory, 3-2. Over G, over G, over G. Great fight. Really cool fight. So again, go check out Growling Sidewinder's channel. Awesome fight there, and I'm excited to debrief more of them. Really cool though that the dogfights just kept fighting from the F-22 perspective. You gotta keep going. In a dogfight, you can't quit. Just gotta keep going no matter what. Don't get in your head. Process the mistakes later. Move on and try to make the next move a better move. That's the best way to dogfight. All right, so you made it to the end of the video, guys. As I promised, I will tell you my specific thoughts on the Su-57 versus the F-22. I do a video about that on my channel, so you can check that out as well. But just a quick tidbit that I would say is the stealth characteristics of the F-22, in my opinion, far superior to the Su-57. Now, if you happen to not be able to see the Su-57, it got some advantage, got behind you in the F-22, there's a potential that you could get shot with it. And again, being aggressive as a pilot is huge. A lot of these Su-57 pilots, though, they do not get a lot of flight time. They're what's called GCI, controlled ground control intercepts. So there's people with radars on the ground that are telling them where to go. So that's an advantage for the F-22 because you're autonomous. You can operate you know, without anyone telling you anything. It helps to have like an AWACS telling you where to go. But at the end of the day, as an F-22 pilot, you can be autonomous and you've got incredible vision in the back and throughout your entire canopy. Su-57 has some railroad visibility issues. Obviously, they've maybe got some things that can, who knows, detect you from the back. Not sure, not clear on that. But at the end of the day, I'd rather be in the F-22. Cool to see that fight. If you guys like this video, please let me know below if you want me to break down more DCS. You can also send it to me on my Instagram. But before you go, please go ahead, dominate that like button for me, maybe even subscribe. Create that mini sonic boom. It's a beautiful thing. Thanks for being here, guys. Most of all, have a great day.